Hey guys, today we are going to look at something that happened in GP Liverpool, which is a modern GP. It is also the most recent GP. The player Mark Pages casts a collected company. He draws six, then he draws one. Now that gives collected company a huge advantage because again, it's an extra card. So let's look at that again. He taps the noble hierarch. He plays out his collected company. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is kind of a break. There is a break when he draws six and then he draws plus one. Clearly, he thinks about drawing the plus one. Now, one of the excuses that pro Magic players will make in this case, I am tired. I've been playing a lot of Magic. I don't know my deck very well. Collected Company has been in Modern since it's been in Standard. It has been around for a long, long time. Now, I've said this in the past. I would love to see a clip where someone plays Collected Company and they draw five cards. Because theoretically, if everyone is making mistakes all the time, wouldn't a mistake also be made to hinder the opponent? Drawing seven cards seems really good. I don't remember what the last card he drew was, but he drew six, paused, and drew his seventh. So that pause, at least to me, indicates that Mark knows what's going on, that he needs... In this case, as you can see, his opponent has a lot of creatures. He needs a very good creature. He needs to hit two creatures. And it's far more likely he does that with seven than with six. So Collected Company reads, look at the top six cards of your library. It is an instant, and he plays it as an instant, of course. Everyone does. But where do you get, like, this kind of gray, right? There, the advantages are very, when you add them up, if Mark is doing collected company for seven every time and just no one notices that he's not on camera, um, it's very, very hard to count with your opponent. So Carlos is probably not really counting along with him. I'm kind of curious what the other card was. Uh, it goes by really fast and then he puts it in his hand off the camera. And off he goes, he picks the two cards he needs, and they're two very good cards because they're, it is a, it's exactly what he needs to win the game with. So again, when this happens at FNM, it's almost impossible to detect. And even if you detect, it happens so fast, the cards get put back so fast in the library that when you call it a judge, your opponent is going to be A, angry, be very mean about it, and see you don't have proof. Uh, in this case, there is a camera. But in most cases, at FNMs and GPs, um, that, that are not the feature match, there are a seven-card collected company I think most of the time goes unchecked. Just like the famous Alex Bercini four-card brainstorm. Really difficult to see how many cards from your opponent's point of view. Now, if we were looking not, so in this case, we have a overview of what's going on. But in real life, we don't really have this overview. We just look at the opponent and they're drawing some amount of cards. They play the deck at a professional level. We would expect them to understand how many cards they're drawing and we trust them on it. But the drawing the cards has always been very... Uh, there is a clever trick that Mark Justice used back in the day. He would actually not draw a card. He would skip his draw phase when he was behind. And the reason he would do that was then you would do a count. He would call a judge and his opponent and say, Okay, my opponent drew an extra card. And then they would count how many cards he had. They would call, count how many cards his opponent has. And because he drew one less card, his opponent was accused of cheating and would be disqualified. 
So the drawing of the cards has always been very troublesome because as we see in Alex Bacini, he can draw extra cards all day. Very difficult to catch. You gotta catch them on camera, but the majority of even high level events, even GP events are not played on camera, right? So like this view that we're looking at is probably the only way we can really catch these people. It, the, the action goes by so fast, the cards are already in the deck. If there's no visible proof, if there's no tangible proof or evidence that your opponent did this, what are you gonna say? The cards are already in the deck. They have the right card, they have the right amount of cards in their hand. There was, there's no way for you to disprove that your opponent was cheating because of the execution. And execution, obviously, a cheater is going to know what problems uh, may arise, and they're going to shortcut those particular problems. So again, maybe this is a mistake. Maybe it is not. But it is something a cheater could use for their benefit um, at FNM, at GPs. Uh, at any event where cameras and video is not being recorded, this will get, there's no defense against a seven card collected company. Uh, and how would you defend against this? Like, let's think about it for a moment. If you were the opponent, would you, given a face to face angle, be able to identify how many cards? He's drawing. He or she, she is drawing. And the answer is no. And if you are at FNM or even more casual and you're doing, let's say, a trade, you're talking to your friends, maybe you don't notice that they draw an extra card. People draw extra cards all the time at my FNM. I used to think it was because they didn't know better, but then I realized they were just all cheaters. And I'm just going to call out the FNM, DNA Comics. Uh, they know who they are. There's things that like go on and, you know, like, again, there's so much randomness and magic that the same person cannot win pre-release or every single time. It doesn't make any sense. The last pre-release I won was Gate Crash. And that was it. I have not won a pre-release since that time. I've topped eight a few of them and I had very strong decks and I felt like I played my lines to win very well. But it's the same person who always beats me. And it's just like, well, all right. Their deck has always has seven on-color mythics or rares. Um, I remember the most egregious one was the core, the one with the Garouk. He had Garouk, Nightmare. He had all the good black and green cards in the set. And I played him three times. I have no idea why I played him three times. I played him in the top eight once. I played him twice in the round rob robins. And I was able to see the majority of his deck. Now, if I didn't play him three times, I would be, I would be suspicious, but not. I wouldn't know that he had seven on color because I saw all seven of them come out. And I asked for someone to look at his deck, and there was no way for me to disprove that he didn't actually open those cards, right? Because that's all he had. Now, did he take a smoke break with friends and go out of the place? Yeah, he did. And did his friend have like a very good red-white aggro deck with the red-white on color? Yeah, he did. But how can I prove that they just didn't open it? So a lot of this uh, magic, you want to find a good play group um, that doesn't want to cheat, that has no reason to cheat. May, um, maybe they have better jobs. Maybe they have, uh, they don't need to plus every single event. I think that's the majority of what's happening here. I never see someone drawing five cards off Collected Company. I never see someone drawing two cards off Brainstorm. But you see far more people drawing four or seven off Collected Company, four off Brainstorm. And it drives me crazy because it's one of those things that even if you catch them, what's the point? You just made someone angry and now they're not going to like you. You accuse them of cheating. Um, either they, you caught them and now they're going to say it's a mistake and that you're not really casual friendly. Or they're going, to, they're going to shift the blame on you. The cheater is very good at lying and cheating. Therefore, they're going to pin you down as the person who is the troublemaker. 
And this happens, I see this happen all the time. And this has happened to me before I had a YouTube channel where then I could call them out by name. Um, obviously it stopped or has been mitigated a little bit from having a channel where <laughs> that's all I do, right? Uh, junior cheeseburgers and uh, cheaters. And obviously they don't want to be called a cheater. But sometimes like you just have to, there's no way you can get justice. There's no justice against a seven card collected company unless it is recorded with this overview, right? This is the only way you can catch this cheat. Anyway, bye guys.